Oh, okay. Yeah. Talking about real belief means he rose from the dead. You know, a lot of people say Jesus, but they think the father got up. That you got to really believe in Jesus. You got to believe that he died and he was raised from the dead and he's seated on the right hand side of the father. You hear me? Mm -hmm. That's real belief. A lot of them got real belief. They said Jesus was a flesh suit and the father got up and it's raining. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to be real. Yeah, it's really deep, man. It's real deep. And a lot of these people are being they're being misled because they're really not getting in that word themselves, you know. So, they're, of course, they're saying something real. And people are giving you some truth because that's what the enemy do here. Come with some truth. But the big major issue of what you have to believe in, he denies that. <laughs> yeah, he denies that. Yeah. But yeah, he passed. You want to get us started? You want to pray in? Or you want me to pray? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. I always like to get a brother a chance, man. You guys are meaning valuable, man. So just know that um. No, let's get let's get in. Let's get going. Dear Father God, in the name of your son Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. We're thankful that you have allowed our brother to get on the line, Lord. You said we'll work two or more gathered. You are in the mix, Lord, so we can start and dig in your word. Give us a better understanding. Open our heart for us to understand your word so we can understand our way in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If some people log Amen. on, if some people log on, they still my attention. Just know I'll be letting them on. Amen. So, so remember, remember real belief. You got to believe that Jesus died, buried, and rose from the dead. You can't just say that Jesus died and then the Father got up and ascended to heaven. You can't say that Jesus was a flesh suit. If you look out today, you got a lot of people that are modalism. You got a lot of people that are oneness. We're going to dig into the word and we're going to understand what thus says the Lord. This is what getting the relationship where you can understand what Christ is saying to us. So we're going to read the scripture out of Acts 22 and at 7 and 9. And we're going to see this is Jesus speaking to the Apostle Paul from heaven. He's already died. He's already descended down into Hades. He already arose back to the earth and ascended to heaven and gave gifts unto men. He's speaking from heaven right here. And I fell to the ground. This is Saul, Apostle Paul, and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, why thou persecute me? And I answered, "Why? who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecuted. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice that spake to me. This is important right here. A lot of people don't believe Jesus rose from the dead and is seated on the right hand of the Father. This is him speaking right now in heaven to the Apostle Paul. You got to understand this. Do you understand that? That he rose from the dead? Right, and that he's seated on the right hand side of the Father and he is speaking to the Apostle Paul in that verse. Yeah. A lot of people don't believe that. You know, a lot of people think that he rose from the dead and that was the Father. They don't believe that Jesus is with the Father in heaven. That's why I just read this verse right here at Acts 22, 7 and 9. This is after Jesus arose and ascended to heaven. He's speaking to the Apostle Paul and saying, Paul, why thou persecute me? He said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus from Nazareth. He's speaking from heaven to him. <laughs> yeah. And that's deep. That's deep because a lot of people don't think that. And that's why we got to understand. That's why I titled this Real Belief. Because real belief, you got to mean that he died, he 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 arose, and he ascended to the right-hand side of the Father. That's real belief. You can't just say that he was the flesh suit and the Father got up. You know, you see a lot of people say that nowadays. So that's why it's important. Then when we get in John 5, we're going to see the distinction between the nature. So you got to understand that there's two in heaven. Amen. So look at John 3, look at John 3, 17 that we got on the board. For God sent not his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So to be saved is through Jesus. That's it. That's the only way. God the Father is saying, sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that through him you should be saved. So the world has to be saved through him. There's only one name under heaven where men might be saved by, and that's Jesus. 
Well, ain't it simple. I don't care what you're going through or what they're going through or what they found out or what they saw. If they didn't see this right here, they missed the mark. Amen. 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 He that believe on him is not condemned. And when we speak, yeah. and when we speak of Jesus, we're not speaking to a picture of the wall. See, this is right. what, this is what people got to understand. They got to get over that. You know, we all went through that as kids, but as you get yourself immersed in his word and Jesus come to you and show you who he is, God is not likened to gold or silver or graven no. art made by man's devices. That's a man's device. We ain't talking about no pictures or no money or nothing. We ain't talking about that. We're talking about the true living God. Amen. Amen. He that believe on him is not condemned. Remember, when you believe on him, you're not condemned. But he that believe not is condemned already. Because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten son. So the Lord knows who don't believe on him. The Lord knows who don't have true belief on him. Amen. Lord knows already. Remember, he brought you here. He know. <laughs> he knows already, right? Amen. What's that, brother? You got you got anything you want to expound on that? Oh, but hold on. Over here messing with this thing. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. As far as people believing that he didn't uh, rise from the dead. Right, right. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't really don't know how to kind of expound on it besides the fact that, uh, I mean, it's in the scripture that it says that, uh, when they went back to the, when they went back on the on the third day, the apostles uh had spoke to the uh, to the Pharisees or the um, the government that was uh, in power at the time. They they asked them for permission to to go and take Jesus out of that uh, that cave that he was that that, that was uh, sealed off with a with a stone. Yeah. And when they went to go and retrieve him, right from my recollection. Right. He, he wasn't there. He had already ascended, right? Right, right, right. Most definitely, yes, sir. And so, I mean, you know, there's scripture. There's scripture that kind of attests to it, that testifies to it. That there's a the, the history that uh, you know, that okay, I guess is some evidence of verification that it uh it took place in the sense that uh it was already it was already bro. Uh, predetermined anyways that that uh that God's son his uh was gonna was gonna uh, sit next to him on the throne. And uh, it all came to pass. Man, that's beautiful. It all came that's to fruition. Exciting. That's exciting man when you can just look at the prophecy of old and see you know, mm -hmm. God speaking of his son to come. And that word you were just talking about, when, you know, when Jesus came back, he encountered Mary Magdalene, casted out seven demons out of her, and told mm -hmm. her to go back and there tell the apostle. Told her to yeah. go back and tell the apostle. So she went back and told Peter. Peter and the other disciple ran to the tomb. When they mm -hmm. went to the tomb, it was already open, and they went inside, and Jesus' garment was laying down by itself, and there was a napkin that was folded over in the corner. Jesus left him a sign. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Left him a sign. And this is why I say, this is why it's important to know the scripture because it's that powerful to where when we immerse ourselves in the word, God will come to us and he'll open up our heart so we can understand what he's saying. Now look right here in the beginning at 1 John. And I'm going to just go to 1 to 4. In the beginning was the word. Remember, the word is Jesus. And the word was with God. Remember, Jesus was with God, the Father. And look what God the Father says. And the word was God. So now you got God the Father, and you got Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior, that God the Father said is God. Let me read that again so we don't get lost. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same yeah. was in the beginning with God. Now that is important. 
Because a lot of people, when you interpret this with the wrong spirit, you think that the father is talking about himself. But the father just let us know that Jesus Christ is in heaven and was in heaven with him. And he is God also. That's right. because the father said so. Remember, that's why it always come back to one, because not only are there one accord, but the father is not judging us. He gave that authority to a son. So he's our Lord and Savior. Jesus said. Mm. Amen. That's how Amen. you get to the father. So if you the middle man, the you the middle man trying to get to me, that means everybody got to go through you and you come to me, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. That's all that means. God and you know, I kind of see that. Kind of see that concept. I kind of, I see the concept that you know, like how you were saying the, uh, the concept that you were saying as far as the, as far as the middleman. Right. Right. I see that concept in it, but then I always there's been times where I ask and say, well, why would there, uh, why would they need to be a, a middleman? Right. Yes, sir. Now that that's important. I'm glad you asked that, um, Nelson, because as you look in the beginning, God has always had an in between, whether it be Moses or whether it be yeah. the prophets. Oh yeah, yeah, man, yeah, absolutely. Man, man is so dirty. You can't just <laughs> go to a holy God. You can't go straight to him. Right. Yeah, and this is a line that people well, and, I, and I, not... I understand. I, I I hear the part of you know I kind of understand you know because I understand the uh, the concept of a middle person because right. you know you know uh you can't have you know with the direct contact the right. direct contact with the with the person that's right. most high right right at the same time when we're when we're talking about someone like uh like God you know that's over everything right that's over everything. And everyone, yeah, uh, and the and the creator of things. Um, I don't know. I just asked myself, um, why would there need to be some kind of a mediator or some type of a uh, someone to do some kind of reporting when the uh, when the uh, uh, what really. There could be a direct connection. Right. Now that's a good that's a good um question. I'm glad you asked that because this is how this is how powerful our God is. Remember Moses on the mountain. <laughs> Moses on the mountain had to hide himself on the cliff of a rock because you, the, the presence of God is the Father is so strong you can die. Remember, you can't yeah. look at the Lord or you would die. Look at so it's God right. knows just enough light to give us where we can understand. Yeah. Now, right here, look at the Apostle John, how he explained handling Jesus Christ when he came to the earth. And this is right here at 1 John, starting at 1 to about 3. That which was from the beginning, which we heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and, be, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Did you hear the Apostle John? He said he laid his eyes on him. They handled mm -hmm. him, the word of life, which was manifested to them from the Father. Mm. Man, that's beautiful right there. Look how God, the Father, just knows how to give us just enough light. He gave us Jesus Christ, who is God, in the flesh, fully flesh and fully God. <laughs> that's beautiful, ain't it? It and is, when, it is. And when you know the scripture and from studying, you know that God the Father walked to earth too. In mm. the days before, you know that. Remember when he came down to Sarah and Abraham in the tent with the two angels and ate with them, sat with them, told them they was going to give them the promised child Isaac? So we can't put God in the box. We can't put God in the box that we can do things, but God can't do. <laughs> we got to come back to our senses. <laughs> So I like, let me finish this one right here. And that which we have seen and heard, and we declare unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son, Jesus Christ. See, everybody don't have fellowship with both of them. Some people say it's one or the other, but true belief is what we're talking about. You got to believe that Jesus died 
was buried and rose again, and he is on the right-hand side of the Father in heaven. We just spoke right here at Acts 22, at 7 and 9, Apostle Paul, why thou persecute me, Saul? Who art thou, Lord? Jesus of Nazareth. He's speaking from heaven. So Jesus is on the right-hand side of the Father. He's speaking from heaven, but you got many people who don't believe. Many who don't believe. Amen. We got Brother T on there with us. Brother T, how you doing, brother? I'm doing fantastic. How you brothers doing, man? God's good. Good morning, my brothers. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good. good morning. Good morning. Good word, man. I'm really listening. He asked a question last week, and he said he wanted to know more about the Father and Jesus. Nice. Remember, remember at Isaiah 57 at 15, I dwell in the high and holy place. This is the Father. Awesome. Him also, which is of a contrite heart, ready to revive the spirit of the contrite ones. The Father said he is dwelling in the high and holy place with Jesus, who have a repentive heart, and he's ready to revive us, who have a repentive spirit, amen, and a contrite heart. This has always been from the beginning. So you got to you get know? your own relationship with Christ. Right. Get your relationship through man, because man will have you thinking just as one up there, and you'll be right. condemned, you'll stand condemned. And them good questions that really get you their answers and then it gets you where you need to be. I asked millions of questions. Yeah. So keep on doing it. And then them questions you ask be brand new to me too, again. So, you know, every time we read the Bible, it's like new. It's, it's I'm just still listening, man. I'm still drinking milk, man. So, yeah, I'm going to just be quiet and just listen. This is beautiful. Look what Jesus says right here. At John 5 and 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, that means truly, truly, he that heareth my word and believe on him that sent me have everlasting life, and he shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. So with Jesus is letting us know that you who hear his word and believe on his father who sent him will have everlasting life and not come into condemnation. So you see, you got to believe in the father. And you have to believe in Jesus. You can't say that they're one, they're one, there's only one up there. We know that they're one accord, but you have to believe the deity, the sovereignty of each one of them. Why? Let us see right here in verse 22. For the Father judges no man, but have committed all judgment unto the Son. That's John 5:22. Let us look at 23: that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honor not the son, honor not the father that sent him. So you can't say Allah and you're trying to reverence the father, but you're trying to bypass Jesus to get there. You can't do that. Remember me and Nelson just spoke on the middleman. The middleman is important. The middleman is what bridges the gap and bring you to the higher man. You can't come to God without an intercessor or a mediator. You cannot. Just like you can't go up into nobody's house trying to get nothing without the person that, that knows him that brought you to him. <laughs> this is common sense. This is 101. This is 101 Bible right here. All the way from the days of old, God spanked by his prophet in sundry times, but now he is speaking by his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You couldn't get to God in the days of old without the prophet. You can't get to God today without Jesus Christ, his son, who been reigning on the throne. He just picked an appointed time to give us his son. Jesus was all the way back in the beginning when the prophet was coming. You can hear him speaking through the Old Testament. At times when he spoke. Amen. So this is good right here. For us to understand our way, that you can't honor the Father without honoring the Son. You can't honor the Father who sent him. If you don't honor Jesus, you're not honoring Father. Remember, the Father judges no man, but have committed all judgment unto the Son. So you're going to get there talking about, oh, Father, and everything has been given to Jesus Christ. Dominion, control, power, the authority, and all of that. And if your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, then Houston, we got a problem. 
<laughs> nice. Yes. Amen. Anybody want to expound on that? We got a couple more scriptures. I'm waiting for some more scripture, but you know, you know, he always gonna send his servant, a prophet, to preach to us, you know, too, because see, you ain't gonna believe that there's a bigger OG out here. So you gotta get that human person to show you, man. Um I wanted to use a different analogy, but I'm not doing that. I was going to say, you know, you got, you know, you got, you know, you just got different people, you know, but uh, so that's, you know, you got these prophets and you got these, you know, you know, you just let's go. I, I don't want to, I, I don't, I, I'm, yeah. Yeah, my guy. Yeah. Your courses keep learning. Because yeah. Remember, we're in the midst of a, a bunch of wolves. Now, these wolves is sharp now. That's why you got to be sharp on your toes. And what I mean by that is you got to get to do what the word says. God said, get to know me first. And I'm glad I did that. And he said, everything else will be added on to you. When he came to me and gave me some power and right. opened his word to me, I was able to see the measure of what Christ is from my relationship with him, not from what another man is telling me. I might hear what you're saying and I'm going to go back to the word to substantiate it. But if I can't substantiate it in the word, it ain't no good. Yeah, man. It ain't no good. I don't care who you is. Brother, sister, uncle, somebody close to me. If I can't stantiate it in the word, it's no good. Look right here at 25, at John 5. Barely, barely, which is truly, truly, I say unto you, the hour is coming now and when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Remember, the voice can come out of nowhere. You, you are clean. Remember John 15 and 3, you are clean by the word I have spoken to you. Number four, abide in me and I in you. See, when that word come initially and speak to you, you're clean. But you got a duty to abide in the vine and he will in you. A lot of people talk about once saved, always saved. That is not true. The scripture right here just lets you know, abide in me and I in you. There's some people who've been cleaned by the word, but they're not abiding in the vine. If you don't abide in the vine, it's not no one saved, always saved. Yes, Jesus prayed over at the Brook of Kidron before he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he said, can no man pluck you out of my hand? That's true. But look, you can pluck your own self out of his hand. That's not one saved, always saved. Because you have a duty to stay connected to the vine. And if you allow this world to work, you allow all these people in the world to deter you from staying connected in this word, guess what? You lose out. Let us finish right here. Remember, Jesus is letting us know you're going to be up, there's going to be the word coming to you. And if you hear his word, you're going to receive life. For as the father have life in himself, so has he given the son to have life in his self. So we see the father is in heaven. He got life in his self. And he has given Jesus the power to have life in his cell. See, John 5 is an important gospel. This is an important book right here in John 5. This lets you know the distinct nature of each one of them. This is powerful right here. For the father have life in his cell, so has he given the son to have life in himself. Amen. Just like you got life in yourself, you got a duty to bring yourself on one accord with Christ's word. Line yourself up with his word. Yeah, you can leave and go do your own thing. That's your business. But you got your own ability. You got your own life, your own spirit to bring yourself on one accord to God's word. Just like Jesus did. Not my will, Lord. Your will be done, right? So he had his own will, but he didn't do his own will. He did the father's will. And have given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. So we see God the Father has given Jesus the authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man. He is the son of God. That is what that means. The son of man is Jesus. Amen. So I put my Bible up because, you know, that was powerful enough for me. That got me shaking right there. That's enough for me. I'm glad get God glad get God 
gave me that revelation right there because that revelation right there is powerful within itself. You have to know the distinct nature of the two or you don't have a relationship with them. That's powerful right there. That's almost like having a court case and this error right here is not erroneous. This error right here is a magnitude that can get the whole case turned over. This right here is a heaven or hell issue right here is what I'm saying. If you don't believe on the distinct nature of Jesus and the Father, you are hell bound. And Jesus says that at five and four, at five and 24, whoever hear my word and don't believe on him that sent me is condemned. That's if you don't believe on the Father. Now you already know if you don't believe on Jesus, you're condemned as well. For God not sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, he might be saved. So your only way to get saved is through Jesus. So if you don't believe on Jesus, guess what? You condemn. And he that believe on him is not condemned, is what it says. So if you don't believe on Jesus, the son of God, you're going to stand condemned. If you don't believe on the father, that he came out from the father, you're going to stand condemned. We just read it in John 5 that the father have life in himself, so has he given the son to have life in himself. Amen. Remember that. That's a beautiful word right here. It's powerful. This goes to the crooks of the distinctive nature of the Father and the Son right here. Read all the chapter 5 of John. It's a beautiful right here. When you can understand that, yes, you're going to have people coming up to you and they know some truth for the scripture. Yeah, they're going to be speaking some truth, but that's how the devil draw you in. He draw you in with truth, but then he start getting twisted all up. As you keep following and listening to him, and as God keep opening your heart for you to understand, you're going to see that his words don't line up. This right here and John 5, this is this is the steak. This is the steak on top of the nacho right here. If you don't believe the distinct nature of the father and the son, you're going to stand condemned. And I'm not saying everything else is everything else is not applicable. I'm not saying that. All scripture is, 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 is given for reproof and correction. I'm not saying all scripture is good, but this right here in five, this is a whole nother different beast. <laughs> this right here goes to the distinct nature of both of them. You have to believe that Jesus, you know, died. He came and, 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 and did a great work for the father and for humanity and gave us to give us salvation on back to the father. You can't go to the Father without Jesus. When I had my vision, man, that light was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. If I had any more of it, I probably would have been dead. My members wouldn't stay on me. My members was gravitating towards the light. But the vision God showed me, he put right there in the midst of where he knew I was going to be looking at and still showed me what he was trying to convey to me. That's how powerful the light is. Now, that was Jesus. Now, just think of if you know what I mean, you got the fullness glory of the Father's life, that'd be too much. You couldn't handle it. That's why you got to understand in Proverbs that only what you're doing for Christ will last is what the word tells us. But in Proverbs, the word lets us know at 23 that even the Proverbs 23, I think it's about one through five, is that the money that you're depending on is going to get up and fly away towards heaven. So everybody's here just depending on this materialism. Guess what? It's going to get up and fly away towards heaven. I'm a witness of that. My face and my eyes, everything was trying to fly off of me towards that light, man. It was beautiful. Mm, uh -uh. We definitely don't want to get caught with our pants down. God has given us time. He's given us time and, and you know, he's not slack because he knows that once, you know, he comes back, once Jesus comes back and the glory, you know, with the angels and the glory of the Father come back, it's going to be too late. It's going to be really too late. And it's going to be too late. And we're going to look at Daniel. And we're going to look at the first chapter of Daniel when he had his vision for Belteshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar's son. You're going to see the Ancient of Times in there. That's the father. The Ancient of Times came with the book and there's tens of thousands. I already said this the other day. Ministered before him. And the book was sealed. And the judgment was set. 
guess who come in the cloud? The son of man, Jesus Christ. He's the only one worthy to open the book. And guess what? Your name has to be found in the Lamb's book of life. Don't be saying Allah or the Father, we expect you to judge us because we're just giving you scripture that the Father judges no man, but have committed all judgment to the Son at John 5, 22. And in that scripture in Daniel, Jesus Christ come in the cloud. He's the only one worthy to open the book. That's the Lamb book of life. If your name is not found in there, man, uh-uh-uh. Mm, 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 mm. Man, that's deep, man. That's deep. Go ahead, brother T. Go ahead, brother. I can't even speak no more, man. I don't want to hear I never knew you. Mm. You know, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, it's a daily struggle, man. Um, I'm still... I'm still battling, man, that, that fight, man. Man, but, you know, um, Jesus is really watch. He's, 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 he's talking in my, uh, my brain. So like, uh, here I am staying in my house because I don't want to be out there in this tough guy world. And I just like, I'm staying away from it. Then I go out there and I about to respond to something and then um he he's helping me. It's hey and it's because I'm getting deeper in my walk. He's like I didn't really know how it was gonna be done, but it's being done like that. He's like spreading what? the oh. huh? No, I think I saw. You had something you were saying there, Nelson? I think you might have talked in something. Go ahead, T. Oh, man, you know, God will help us, man. And he's been helping me, man. So I just want to say thank you, Jesus. You know, um, you know, uh, he's been helping me a lot. And, um, I only listen to my Christian music. He's been helping me a lot, man. He's been helping me a lot, man. Uh, he's setting an army to, to to watch over me. And I sit here and I go, you know, I paint these little pictures in my mind. I go, man, all this stuff that, you know, and it just, I just fall into these little thoughts. Like I be just like, really like, man, you know, I'm here now. I made it this far. And I'm like, uh, and, you know, um, it's pretty quick. I, 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 I can just shift off into this little dumb thought, but he makes me, he helps me. And he say, no, nah, man, don't do it. Don't do it, T. Don't do it. So God bless him, me. Thank you, Jesus. I wake up every day. I pray for people. And that's what's getting me stronger and helping me. That's it. It's a daily struggle. It's a daily fight. But no, you keep on fighting and mustering your way through. Trust me, man, I'm going to live and prove. Everything I'm telling you, I was no good. You hear me? And in the garbage can. I was that bad. You hear me? But so I know if Jesus could do it with me, he could do it with you. You hear me? You leave it up to me. I'll be in Walla Walla right now, still serving a 50 year sentence. So, I mean, I think, and that's why you see me. I owe all my life to Jesus, and it's beautiful. It's better than what I was going to do, trust me, by far. So, you know, don't think I'm just getting on here playing with you because that's it. You know, I ain't got to do that. I can be doing something else. But I love the man, this word is powerful, man. It is renewing, it's refreshing, replenishing. It allows you to guard your way so you can know your way. There's traps out there. There's snares out there that's set up to get you. And if you don't know the owner of them, you're going to fall right into them. Man, there's many of them. And guess what? The devil don't have red horns. Guess what he come with? What's your desires? The things you like. The things you like.